Okay, welcome back to Cool Club Podcasts. We have reviewed a bunch of golf clubs this year. Yeah, we've tested a lot. So many. More, even more next year, but <laughs> yeah. we've tested a lot. Uh, we honed in this year purely on, on drivers and irons. Some of that right. was a little bit of a manpower thing, and right. some of it was figuring out testing, right? Yep, it's not an easy thing to do. But we also have uh, another weapon in our arsenal. And probably the more important one, right? right. Uh, and, you know, it's our fitters, right? So what are they thinking, and who are they recommending which clubs to and stuff? Now, keep in mind, they actually do have all the robot data and access to it. Yes. So it's not, you know, out of the picture entirely. Um, but really, what's selling, and, and what do our fitters really think is good for specific, specific people, right? So yep. Yeah, and, and that's what we tried to do here. It was like, okay, well, let's take the robot data away from it. Like you said, they have access to it in fitting, so they've got the Right, the so awareness. it's kind of mingled in there a little bit, yeah. Um, but it's really, you know, what are they seeing in fittings? What are their gut feelings? What are people enjoying out there? Right. And it was just a raw survey, a kind of like quick question, quick answer. Right. So I shot it out of there, and we've got fitters all over the US. I even got the guys in Australia involved in this. So it's really a holistic view of what all of our cool clubs yep. fitters are actually doing. I asked them to vote on certain categories within drivers, irons, fairways, and hybrids, and that's how we're gonna run it. We're gonna run the, the driver one first. I think a lot of people are gonna be right. into that, and then we'll kind of run down the set. So the first category that I put out there was, what do you rate as the best driver under 75 miles an hour? This is a, a big category of people. Maybe yeah. we don't see them all, but it's a huge driver category. And we actually had a fairly good sized winner that you would never expect. Right. So this is really like a out of the box, not the company you think the wins for the under 75 miles an hour, but it's actually the Titleist TSR1. TSR1. Yeah. And I mean, I voted for this one personally. Yeah, I would too, probably. It's a super lightweight, um, neutral looking, you know, metal sounding. It's all the right. things that you want. Well, and Titleist is not what we used to think in the past, right? It's not just for high handicaps. Titleist was one of our, it was actually our number one selling iron for a good period of time over the last couple of years. Um, so they've kind of broken out of that mold a bit, particularly when they came out with the driver starting with TSR. Or TSI rather, you yeah. know that was probably the best driver of the year all round. I mean, yeah. some people, you know, beat it in forgiveness, Ping did, and some distance, you know, TaylorMade did, but you know, it did really well, and the second generation is just as good. And this highlights its model range, like you were just saying. TSR one is like this new thing; it's lightweight, not right. many people do it. It's purely for that low speed, higher spin, higher launch, and then you feed through that line. TSR two is a great driver right, all, all around. TSR3 yep. is a tour driver. They're a really good driver as well. So they have a good line. Yeah. But you wouldn't expect to see Titleist in this realm. Um, I will tell you, there are, you know, both Callaway and Telemate are coming out with lightweight versions next year as well. Yes, true. Uh, and this is kind of playing off the whole popularity of Zexio and stuff that is designed to be super light um, for, you know, lower club head speeds. And that's what it's, it is, and I think we're going to see a lot more of that. So the TSL one got 33% of the vote. That's pretty good. Right. I want to mention the second place here because sometimes it might be pretty close between first and second. Yeah. In this case, it wasn't as close, but the G430 Max got second And that vote. makes sense, right? That was the most forgiving driver we had tested and stuff. Um, the downside to the, the thing stuff in general is they tend to be heavier heads. Yep. Um, so if you get someone who's really looking for distance and stuff, that, that weight is actually what affects it a bit. And the, um, the HL for me this year, I get what Ping did, but when, you, when you're moving that lightweight in the back, it, into the back of the driver, it almost right. kind of defeats the purpose. You want weight low and back in those forgiving drivers, and you're right. actually putting a lighter weight in it. So the way we did it, maybe our fitters didn't get the best use out of it than a, an entirely light head. Right, exactly. Um, so let's drop down into the second category, which is going to be maybe the majority of golfers out there. Yeah, 75, 75 to 95, 95. that's a big range, it's right? Range so range. that's a lot of different players. It's a lot to and, ask and, of the and we'll, we'll also <laughs> post some other information. Actually, we, we track our sales by every 10 miles an hour. So that's another thing we'll throw on. That Maybe just throw a little nugget off of that as well. Yeah. Um, but, you know, that's, that's right. This one got 50% of the votes in this category. So it's a pretty strong winner. Yeah, Paradigm Standard Driver yep. killed it this year. Yep. Yeah, it did really well. It's basically a really good mix of a lot of things. It, it was good in distance. It was good in forgiveness. Um, I don't think it was the best in any one of those, but it was probably distance here and there. Um, but all around, it was a great driver. Yeah. And it was our number one selling driver all around. That makes sense. I was going to say, that yep. has to be our best sales. It came through, came out I'm of the box. I'm playing it. I mean, I tried a whole bunch of everything. I mean, I've got a Titleist as well, but yeah. I like both of them. And, and basically, Callaway came out strong. They started winning at the beginning of the tour season. Right. They got a lot of hype about it. They had this new... Um, the carbon chassis. Oh, it was paradigm shift. Paradigm right? shift. Yeah. It was a big, it was a big <laughs> deal. So it actually did work. I'm glad that they won this category. It was a, it was a great driver. Again, followed by G430, G430 Max in second place again. Right. Again, more forgiving. Um, 
bigger head a little bit. It looks bigger anyway. Yeah. Um, but great driver as well. Yeah, it's awesome. And it was it was closer, right? It was like 50% of the market versus 33, so it's still pretty high up. Yeah. And, and you got to keep in mind too that we only listed the drivers that we carry yes. for these fitters. So there's some Strixons and some other really good drivers that are out there that are not mentioned in here. Uh, just because they're not in our fitting matrix, so it's not a fair test. Yeah, yeah. This is this is basically the big four. Big with four the, with Cobra tacked on the end with of Cobra it as well. As well. Yep. Yeah. Um, and we and then when we get into the irons, we are going to have pretty much everything in yep. that in that mix. Um, now, you know, getting towards that higher speed, but still capturing that hundred mile an hour market, which you think is you right. know, a lot of golfers. This was this is really the all rounder, ninety five to one hundred and ten miles an hour, and I voted for this one too. TSR yep. three. Yeah, I did too. Actually, that's my other driver, right? So. Right. Um, Great driver, has been really good all around. Almost doubled what the Paradigm TD did at that speed, which right. makes sense. Yeah. Um, traditional looking shape and stuff. I mean, really good all round driver, the title this was. Um, Simple, I like the adjustability, we touch on it all right. the time. That that at a high speed driver is great. Rear, left to right adjustability. Great looking shape, tightless cult following. Right. A lot of the fitters, I think it's just a safe place. You know, it's oh, just yeah. gonna yeah, get a lot really wrong with it. Yeah. yeah, stuff going on. And then we go into the second place, which is Paradigm TD. Yeah, I'm surprised that actually ended up in second on on that uh, one. I speed. would not have put that in second just yeah. because I think it's just too low spin for the bottom of that speed. For me, right. 95 miles an hour, um, it's probably a little over that. It doesn't spin enough, True. Um, and and it's not super forgiving. Um, but interesting to see it being second in that. Second in that vote, yeah. yeah. Well, and then it's a simple one at the end here. We got 110 plus miles an hour. These guys are elite speeds. We're talking towards the tour tour right. end of the, of the of the speed range. And the roles reverse. Exactly. And it starts to make and more that sense. That totally makes sense, right? So the Paradigm TD one, the high speed one, yep. it's a spin killer. Yep. Uh, it's good in other things too. It's pretty forgiving. Um, really good ball speeds and stuff, but it's definitely a spin killer. And uh, that was great. I loved it. I played the t TD this year. I also played the Cobra LS. It didn't pop up in one or two here. Titleist TSR3 in second place. This is probably the closest vote. There's only 11% separating them. Right. Uh, which is not massive when you think about. No. You got Stealth Plus, you got G430 LS Tech right, out there. Right, ones in there. They weren't that far behind the, no. the pack. Um, now the sales is more your end of the deal. I can do the yeah, right. you're the sales guy. Right, well, you know, obviously, you know, Asking the fitters which ones they like the best. Obviously, there's some marketing involved in there, which one they're playing a little bit. Um, but at the end of the day, really, what sells yep. is really kind of a really uh, solid number. This is the net result of it all. The exactly. robot, the fitter, this is what happened this Yeah, year. exactly. Now, the fitters have, obviously, their opinions, which is what we just went over. They also have all the robot data. Uh, and combined, obviously, and the customer's feedback is what sells. So this is a really important number as far as what's selling for what category. So let's start down at the bottom end of the speed and just work our way through. We've got 65 to 74 miles an hour of club head speed here. Right. Um, oh. And you've got the best, best seller, which is what we both kind of thought might be the, the, the best at that speed. Right. Ping G430 max. Yeah, G430 for X, that makes sense. It's more forgiving, right? A lot of the people at those speeds are not necessarily better golfers. Uh, the only downside to that is it's a relatively heavy head, as we mentioned before, and the, some of the lighter ones uh, give you a little more speed. Um, but it makes sense, right? Yeah. It's a forgiving golf club, and that's good. It's a lot of sense. Well, thinking out loud, I think that when you get a heavier head in, in play there, there is more forgiveness there, just, anyway, oh, yeah. just with that more mass. So right. the trade-off for gaining a couple of miles an hour of club speed and hitting the golf course more often probably negates itself. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. And you, you obviously see that that's what our fitters are going for here. Right, but then you see uh, Paradigm and Paradigm X having 20% each, you know, yeah. so that's really the winner in that category to some extent. Yep. Uh, and then TSR1 popping up in, as 12%. So, But that's still quite a fair few uh, titles at yeah. that really low speed. And that's it. I mean, Callaway is the overall winner, I guess, but Ping, Ping taking the, as a singular model. A single model in the, the, the thing. Yep. So the next range there, 75 to 84 miles an hour. Right. Not so a lot of difference, really. Uh, you tend to get a little better golfers. There's probably a few more senior men in there than there are ladies um, yep. a little bit. Um, but then they're pretty bunched together as well. Uh, G430 Max won, but by a little bit over the Paradigm. Yep. Uh, which makes sense. Well, that is a really one. small margin, actually. Right. <laughs> uh, exactly, a really small margin, a couple yeah. of percentage points. Um, Stealth HD showed up. Great which, drive. Why we don't sell more HD drivers is beyond me. Uh, yeah. But to you know, give Stealth, uh, Stealth some credit, that's a really draw bias driver and yeah. does solve a lot of problems for but people. They went to that extreme this year. They had that Stealth HD iron that was that really squat right, low right. thing. The, the fairway woods were super low. I mean, I loved it for that that category of play. Right. I think it was probably the best um, design feature out there to, to really help what's going on. Yeah, it was a pure slicer it definitely was a lot of help. And I think that terminology scares a few people off in the fittings. When you say HD or draw bias, they're like, oh, you know, yeah. I'm going gonna to get better. But they really probably should just play it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> uh, sorry, moving, sorry, sorry. moving down swing that the, list. Swing changes are tough. So. Yeah, exactly right. right. You're better off just giving yourself a helping hand with the exactly. equipment. That's why we're here. And actually, Ping did some research a couple of years ago and stuff, and they, they do all the, um, the ARCO stuff on the back of the club. So they tracked all their data from all the clubs they saw with ARCOs and stuff. And even the draw bias drivers, I mean, they were still, you miss right. Yeah. So yeah, the, yeah. you can't have too much you know, left bias for a driver for somebody who's licensed at all. You just needed to, to name it something else. Just name right. it something exactly. neutral and people are less freaked out. Yep. Um, getting up to a bigger category here, 80, 85 to 94 miles an hour. Yep. And it's still the same winner at this point. It's more forgiveness. It's heavily forgiveness biased. Right. So, so Ping's still one of that in that area as well. Yep. So uh, you okay. know, Ping, Ping was the number one, the G430 Max again. Uh, Paradigm came in again second, almost exactly the same, right? So 20 and 21. Yep. Not a lot of difference there. Um, and there's a shocker. The last one in the TSR2 showed up there and the Stealth Plus. The plus of that, that at speed. At that speed, which is, I mean, it's got to be adjustability driving that. You Has think? to be. Or, um, you know, 70, 85 to 95 miles an hour, you get some people that start spinning it. I was just thinking about that. And it's a that. low spinner, so maybe that's it. And the other thing is maybe you'd be, be able to get the uh, the 12 degree model in that and cranking the loft all the way up. Right. Two degrees in that sleeve with the adjustability. Maybe that just helped a few guys out yeah. do what they needed to do. But it's definitely in there. Yeah. Okay, so now we start moving up. And this is more of the, you know, where we tested the robot at 95 miles right. an hour. 95 to 104. This is right in your wheelhouse. Yeah, this is right in my wheelhouse. I'm right in the middle of that, although probably on the bottom end right now. But right. <laughs> <laughs> Just get back in the gym. You'll exactly. be fine. Um, we go straight in with what I would expect to be the winner this year anyway, which is right. that Paradigm. Yeah. Really great all-round driver. Um, but right next to it is obviously the G430 Max again. Yeah. Um, you know, followed by the... You know, the Paradigm TD started kicking in at that point. You know, you get some higher speed where you start and have some spin. Yep. Not so much between 95 and 104 miles an hour before somebody hits up on it, but if you're hitting down on it heavily, you get a bit more gear. then you get more spin and more gear effect, and obviously that makes some sense. Yep. TSR2, TSR3, interesting, um, the forgiveness of the TSR3 after we did the robot testing. I'm not sure how that plays into the fittings, but I would have started using the TSR3 more. even more, right, with yeah, that forgiveness. Yeah, what we noticed when the, uh, both the TSI and the TSR a little bit is the, uh, you know, the difference between the forgiveness of the TSR3 and, and the 2 were really not that much. No. Uh, almost where it's a tie. Yeah. Or it's probably a little different if we did more mapping and stuff, but they're, they're really close. Um, so personally, I like the three better. It's a better looking club for one, and it's got more adjustability. Yeah. So that does make some sense, actually. Some of the beginner players with that head shape with the two being a little more, you know, low and back, yep. it makes it look like you can sweep it. I think yep. that helps. Tour players having that little dumpier shape. Kind but of again, thing. they're at a 95 to 104. If you actually two, put the two catalysts together, they're 23 percent. So that's a it's that's pretty good. They're a, a great year. Great drivers. Yep. Pushing more into the realms of where people would like to be, but maybe right, aren't all the time. Right, right, okay. 105 to 114. Now we're right in the tour average once we get to the top end of this. Yeah, this is kind of senior tour average, probably is 106 yeah. or 4 or something like that nowadays. So, um, But it's still you know, a fair amount of speed, so you are creating more spin at that speed. Um, Paradigm TD1. TD1. It right. won by a strong uh, margin. And it won by a fairly good amount. Right over the TSR3, yep. which is close. Yep. A little higher spin, very similar in a lot of other characteristics. Uh, and the TS and the and the, the ping the G G430 LST shows up there. I, I think I know why that's down there from a fitness point of view. Like quality driver, super low spin. Right, you know, it's what oh, it's it very felt like spin. in the fitting, and the face yep. sat a little open. And it's a ping look, and I think that the ping look might scare away a few guys that are actually right. you know better players, even though it's a quality driver, oh, it's yeah. super forgiving. People want to see more neutral at this point in the in the right. bag. Um, and then we got the Stealth 2 standard model. Yeah, that's there. kind of surprising. Uh, although, you know, from 105 to 114, that's not super high spin. No. And the standard model still is relatively low, so yeah. that does make some sense. And it's a really good driver. Yes. Uh, and now very top end, you know. This is dream, dream stuff. 115 right. plus. Yeah. Um, Callaway, clear winner here. Clear winner. Yeah, there's a low stretch. spin driver out there, um, followed by the LST. Yep. Again, another low spin driver. Uh, and the TSR3, so I mean, it's not really that surprising. And then the Stealth Plus, obviously, is in there as well. Yeah. And they're all pretty, I mean, they're all doing pretty well there. Um, not one's like super better than the other, but uh, yeah, that's not surprising at all. No, and I think that's when the Ping LST starts to come into it. You've got a lot more speed. Right. So that low spin starts to make a bit more sense. They can yep. get it under control. And it's fairly right bias as well. So is Definitely. the Callaway, actually. Yeah, the Callaway is actually yeah. more right bias than yeah. I thought. Uh, it'd be interesting to see what all of their new stuff comes out like next year right. and if these stack up the same, but. This will be a reference point for us. We'll, yep. we'll do this at the end of next year, and we'll see what drivers and who's shuffling around in that yeah, leaderboard. At the end of the day, on all of this stuff we do, all this testing and stuff, really want to look at you know what works for what 
you know, how you swing. Yeah. Um, that's a pretty good indicator. If you're, if you're one of the top two or three in here and you're in, right in the thing, you've probably got the right driver. Yeah. Well, head to our reviews page on the website. Um, we're going to publish these numbers. We're going to publish some fun podiums of, of, of the winners in these categories. Um, see our reviews individually on the heads. This is all about making it easier for you to go and make a purchase at your local golf store or come and get a fit in and, and make a purchase with some actual knowledge behind it rather than some just right. branding. Right. I mean, all the OEMs do all this robot testing for a reason, right? And yeah. I was at Callaway recently. I had the, they had the robot set up for John Romswing to dial his stuff in. Um, so, you know, it's a great way to kind of narrow down, you know, what fits and you know, what works well for me. Yeah. And that's, that's, you know, that's, that's a starting point. There's plenty of YouTube golfers out there. That's yep. our market right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. All right.